Hey there folks and other folks, Pluggedo 107 here with my game of the year kind of thing and uh, since it's the holidays instead of you know writing a review of some kind I've decided that I'm going to record, produce and edit a video of course that's way easier isn't it? and since I don't like talking alone in a microphone I'll just let's play Tetris Attack yeah, well more than I'll beat the game in one go but so yeah it's better than talking to myself, you'll agree with me. So, alright, game of the year. 2012 has been a great year for video games. Uh, I've looked at the Wikipedia list for all games that were released and... Well, I've played quite a bunch. To narrow it down, I think I'm going to... First talk about most, if not all, the games that I've played. Then I'll quickly remove some of them into my final list because I play lots of games. Mm, I wouldn't say that I play them entirely for academic reasons, but most of them I play to see how they were done and what I would do instead. That's kind of a thing that I like as some kind of designer to fix, if you will, some of the problems that I've encountered while playing some of my favorite games of this year. Of course, that's not always the case. Sometimes I encounter games that I just don't like, and I can't put my finger on why. That makes me feel sad. Well, not that much, but... So, what was going on this year? Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Yeah, I've played that. It's not bad. I think there was too much stuff going on, like Skyrim or such other game, so I couldn't get myself to play it. Being competitionist is not a bad thing, but when you're, you can't play your games because you just want to do everything, then it gets kind of an handicap. So, no game of the year for you, Kingdom of the Family. Resident Evil Revelations. Well, it was a pretty decent Resident Evil on the 3DS, and I really love the extra modes they add in, added in. Um, the story was kind of nonsense, but still, it was a good Resident Evil game and it was on the 3DS, so it's win-win. Uh, Rhythm Event Fever, yeah, spoiler alert, that's my game of the year. I just love Rhythm Event, I love how the game makes me feel. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I'm when I play video games I don't look for graphics or sound design or story even. I look for what the game's designer is trying to convey through gameplay and how I feel when I play the game and after and if I want to play it again. These are all criteria for me choosing my game of the year and Rhythm Heaven is just, it's just perfect. It's charming, quirky, weird, gameplay is fun, the mini games are memorable, they make great internet jokes. And I've played a bunch, with friends, alone, I've started over the whole thing multiple times, so yeah, great game. Tales of the Abyss on the 3DS. Well, it's a JRPG, I've played most of it, I hadn't played it before, so it was a great occasion for me to discover Tales of the Abyss. Uh, Rayman Origins, a really neat platformer that I've played on the Wii with my friends. It's kind of riding on success of New Super Mario Brothers, but it's doing it in a way more interesting fashion. I can't wait for the next one. As sure as a rat. Well, is it? No. Well, okay. I think As sure as rat is a pretty good game by itself. I've played some weird games in my time, like Kara Seven or No More Heroes to an extent. And some of them can be kind of a drag to play through. You play only to see what the story is, or because you're really invested in the characters and all. But as sure as rat, the gameplay was okay, and the cutscenes were really crazy. And everything with the quick time events. I'm a big fan of quick time events. Yeah, not all that. Hands me. Yeah, it, all pretty good. Binary domain. I've played it for about three quarters through. Yeah, I don't like third-person shooters, so... 
Big bow. Kitty Curious Uprising. I've played most of it. it. Maybe the control scheme made me not like this game. I don't know. I never got used to it. So. But the humor was nice, the gameplay systems are very interesting. Uh, if, on if only there wasn't that big stand thing and. If. Maybe as a Wii U game it would be perfect. Trying to. Um, really good art style, really interesting gameplay mechanics. What else could you want? It's a pretty solid co op game. Shoot many robots. That came this year? That came out this year, yeah, really? Well, it's a platformer RPG where you shoot robots. And I've played it fairly. I I've beaten, beaten the game. It's, it's okay. Xenoblade Chronicles. I love JRPGs. And Xenoblade, Xenoblade Chronicle was one of those games. And I'm quite happy that they still make these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, there was there were a few problems with Xenoblade, like like with Kingdom of Amalur, there were too much too many things to do. Even though you could see them all, it it always felt hyper overwhelming. So I couldn't get past that. I didn't want to continue playing the game if I couldn't do everything, and it would have taken forever. Legends of Grimrock. Uh, I never played those kind of games when I was a kid, so I didn't have the kind of nostalgia that some people did, but I managed to get pretty far. I love old school RPGs. And Legend of Grimlock scratched that itch like not, not that many games did this year. Trials Evolution. Now, Trials is a very frustrating game, but I've stayed up late at night to continue playing it, so can be that bad, eh? It's, it, it's frustrating but fair, the, the levels get more challenging as you progress and when you finally manage to beat it, dear god it's satisfying. Okay, maybe that hyper 10 minute course thing was kinda bad, but they can't all be winners. The Walking Dead. I have mixed feelings uh, with The Walking Dead, I don't think it's that great, sadly. Um, I don't know, the story kind of disappointed me. I didn't like the ending. I know it's really tough to write a good ending, but... Uh, I'll... Yeah, I don't know. Most of the characters were okay, but... I guess I just can't reconcile with the fact that none of your choice really matter in the end. I know, the illusion is pretty convincing, but if you really think about it, it's... Nah. I'd rather not have choices if it didn't matter. But then again, it'd be like any other adventure game, and I don't know if it would be as good as it is. Yeah, The Walking Dead isn't bad by any means, but I just don't think it lives, lives up to the hype. I'm losing pretty bad. Uh, Alright. Um, uh, Di Diab Diablo? 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 Uh, Diablo? Ah, uh, Diablo 3. Diablo... Diablo 3. Yeah, Diablo 3 is... Ah, I can't manage to pronounce it. That's crazy. Alright, that video game by Blizzard. Well, pretty good. Ah, pretty great. Impressive even. I really love that game. Yeah. I was a big fan of Diablo, Diablo 2 and I played it for many hours and I did the same with the third game. Of course some people are going to argue that it's not the same, it's not as good, but I don't know. Still feel like uh, action RPG with lo strong loot elements. The real money action house is kind of a bummer because I, as I've written in my review, you can buy everything that you want in Diablo 3 only by going to the auction house and spending a few bucks. Or gold. Everything's there. I managed to buy really good gear for a few thousand pieces of a few hundred thousand pieces of gold. And it wasn't really great gear, so. Lollipop chainsaw. 
I love Suda51. I love Grasshopper Manufacture. Points like that. I can't say that I've disliked any of the games they've put out so far. Um, okay, maybe Shadow of the Dam wasn't the best shooter ever, but Lollipop Chainsaw was a competent beat them up with a neat story. I really dislike the Chainsaw Blaster part, but otherwise, thumbs up. Tiny Arcade Adventures Episode 3. Way better than the two first episodes. Well, it's a 16 bit RPG like Final Fantasy V or 4. But I guess the low point of that game is the story. No, seriously. I, I just got to the last dungeon, I guess, and it's text dump after text dump, and I don't understand anything. Like, why is this relevant to anyone? Why, why is this thing in the game at all? No? I didn't have an answer, and I just skipped through all of it, because seriously, there's so much text, and it doesn't make any sense. Theatrhythm Final Fantasy. Another of my great games of this year. I just love rhythm games, but that kind of Wendan type of game... It's just what gets me. I mean, I love Final Fantasy music, I really love music in video games, it can be... It's often the thing that I remember most. Uh, it's not a secret that I listen to a lot of video game music, and some of it makes me very nostalgic. And uh, yeah, playing old Final Fantasy tunes, it was really fun. The game is really good. The graphic style, graphical style, is really interesting. And all the RPG mechanics they managed to get in there, they make the experience even that better. And it's a great co-op game too. Um, blah, 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 blah. All right. What else is there? Horse must die too. Nah, not much to say. I have written a review of that game. It, it's okay. It's nothing to write home about. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Nah, I've beaten it. Uh, I've skipped the whole story because I don't care about stories in my Kingdom Hearts games. Uh, it's okay. The drop system's kind of weird. Um, what else is weird? The whole Pokemon thing is weird also because it really takes you a step back from the game when you have to stop and evolve your things and you don't know what monsters you should be creating and what monster is the best and all that jazz. Uh, new Super Mario Bros. 2. Uh, Oh, well, it wasn't terrible. I, I had fun playing it. It wasn't really interesting either, but at least it was fun. Guild Wars 2. Yeah, that's an MMORPG. Not a bad one, but I, I still play it. It's, it's, it's fairly original, has some good ideas. It's kind of difficult for my tastes, but, you know. FTL Faster Than Light. Really a surprising little game. Uh, a neat spaceship simulator mixed with a roguelike. Um, I like that kind of game. It's the kind of game that I'll play pretty much for hours on end. But I feel like I've seen everything there is to see in FTL, so I've stopped playing it a while ago. Borderlands 2. Oh man. Uh, I've played so much Borderlands 1. It's, it's maybe the first game that I've spent an all-nighter playing. Maybe. And me and my friends were on it like for months. But Borderlands 2 is nothing short of the exact same success. And I think they've created more interesting characters and mechanics and enemy types and boss fights and everything. Some points could be better, of course. But. Uh, like the tone and the overall setting, but meh, gameplay is so good. The classes they've added, the Micromancer, really interesting mechanics. Even though Fight for Your Life is still a frustrating concept, and I'm not a fan, I don't think it's that great of an idea. Uh, Torchlight 2. Well, Torchlight. It's like Diablo. It's like 
many action RPGs. It has very interesting ideas, but I don't think it's well balanced. I, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but I, like I've written in my review, I just, when I played Torchlight, I just did whatever and usually I could get where I wanted. I mean, there, there's no good way or bad way to play the game, but you shouldn't be able to do just whatever and equip just whatever item you find and be able to defeat any adversary. Because otherwise, what's the point of having multiple choices if they all, if they all are valid for all situations? Yeah. World of Warcraft Mists of Pandaria. That's not really... There's not much to discuss about this because... Uh, you know, it's World of Warcraft. You hate it or love it. And it's a staple as far as MMORPGs go. And... Even in 40 years after the nuclear holocaust, there will still be a bunker with World of Warcraft servers running. It's just... It's just that impossible to kill. Uh, I, I, I've played most of the Miss of Pandaria and it's it's okay. It's World of Warcraft. You grind boars. I don't know. Half Minute Hero. I'm talking for the new PC version. Yeah, it's not... It couldn't be my game of the year, but it's still really great. A little puzzle RPG with really interesting mechanics. And yeah, love it. Buy it if you don't. Have it. It's on the Steam sale right now. XCOM Enemy Unknown. My biggest disappointment of this year. And I, by that, I don't mean that the game is my biggest disappointment. I mean that it's the game that I'm disappointed the most about myself. Because I really wanted to like XCOM, but. There's just something that I can't put my finger on that makes me not want to play it anymore. I've played it. I've played about five or six hours. I got. I mean, you know, I have some good equipment. I have satellites. I'm dealing with terror missions left and right, but there's. I don't want to play it. When I open the game, I just freeze and go. Yeah, maybe I should play something else, I just don't know what I want to do with XCOM. So yeah, I, and that's what disappoints me. I can't say why. I can't say I would much rather play it if they did XYZ thing. So yeah, too bad. I really think it's a, an amazing game. It's a great remake of the classical turn-based strategy game. And much like Civilization, you know, you'll go one more turn and play for, for hours. Hotline Miami. Man, I'm so happy I've bought it. It's a really weird puzzle shooter game. Um, Craggy. It's a really weird game. It's a really weird game, but you want to play it to see how it will turn out, and it's worth it. Um, of course, it can get frustrating. I've written a review about it. You can remember that blog. Um, but uh, yeah, I find Miami. If you don't have it, try it. It's a trippy little puzzle game that will entertain you for a few hours. Uh, Professor Layton, the Miracle Mask. Well, it's a Professor Layton game, and in kind of treaty. Yeah, you do puzzle, find how many matchsticks there are in the pile or something. We all know the answer to that. Um, story's okay, a bit previsible, but at that point, you know, you, you know what to expect. Uh, yeah, pretty great game. Uh, yeah, good year for 3DS games all in all. Uh, Paper Mario Sticky Star. Uh, that game really surprised me. I thought it would be an RPG, but it's not, really. It's a weird blend of adventure game and kind of RPG, you know, you have timed attacks and you use different items to deal damage to enemies in a turn-based fashion, but all in all, you, you spend your attacks to defeat your enemies, so it's always 
uh, back and forth do I need to use my strongest attack? Like, I've beaten the boss with normal stickers, and the battle lasted way too long, and when I was done, my little helper pixel thing told me that I could have ended the battle way quicker with a special sticker, and I was like, well, I, I won still, so I didn't need, you know, I thought that I could do it, so I did. But yeah, yeah, I really like Paper Mario, it's way too hard though. I think it's hard. I mean... But it's interesting that Nintendo did this. Very interesting. New Super Mario Brothers U. Hmm. Wii U's kinda lackluster. I don't know. New Super Mario Brothers U is a great addition to the Mario franchise, but doesn't do anything to surprise. It's really well made, very charming, um, great design, great sound design, gameplay is tight, the levels are interesting, there are secret exits, ghost houses, Yoshis, all of these things. But it's pretty much the same Mario game we've been playing for the last forever years. It's not a bad thing though, that's, that's what's important. Uh, it's a Mario game, but so what? It's a great Mario game. Nintendo Land. Well, it's the back-end for the premium Wii U system. Um, it's a great showcase, some of the games are very interesting. They could be remade into bigger games, but... Yeah, as many games to showcase how you can use the gamepad and multiplayer with with dirty old Wii modes. You know, it does its job pretty competently. I'm not j just saying I'm not a fan of having to use Wii modes all over again. But yeah, sure. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Zombie U. Well, yeah, Zombie U is pretty neat, but I don't know if I'm going to play any more of it. It's just not hooking me. Setting is nice, the gameplay mechanics are interesting, it uses the Wii U to its fullest, but... That's pretty much it. It's fine, but not great. And finally, Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. Why is this here? Well, I've played some of it. Yeah. It's Baldur's Gate. Do you remember Baldur's Gate, right? With old school second edition rules and all of that? Yeah, yeah I'm playing it on the iPad. It's subpar. Let's say that the interface wasn't redesigned to accommodate a, a smaller screen touch control. Let's leave it at that. Um, Alright. So, I've took the 10 games that I prefer the most. And we arranged them in an orderly fashion, so I could declare what my games of the year are. If you're interested in that kind of thing, and if you're still listening, well, that means you are, right? So, number 10 will be Faster Than Light. Like I said, neat little roguelike slash ship simulator. I have some great stories to tell about Faster Than Light, about that time where I warped into somewhere and I lowered my shields and all my crew died and there was only one guy left and you run away and I got to the rebel ship and died in 3 seconds, you know, these kind of stories. I don't wanna lose. Alright. Oh well, alright. Number 9, Trials Evolution. I've played so much of it, I almost threw my controller at the wall. Um, you know, I did the same thing 5 times in a row, more like 50 times in a row, and well, once you get the hang of it and you learn a level and you get farther, you know, the more and more you play, it's really great. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles would be number 8. Uh, so well done. The graphics are really impressive, or they're Wii. They're really impressive and, you know, story is nice, it's JRPG as hell. The, the gameplay systems are really interesting, 
the way you crafting the gems and how you get loot and the battle system is very dynamic, you don't wait for bars to fill up. And there are cooldown and crowd control and you can have tanks and eaters and all kind all that good stuff. A serious rat is my number seven. I love bursting. I love pressing a thousand buttons at the same time to do some crazy mind-blowing thing. Story is pretty good. The battle system is okay. You punch a thing until you can burst, and then it's awesome again. You know, you want to punch a thing because then it's awesome. Instant gratification. Uh, oh, Rayman Origins! I, I love Rayman Origins really bad. I can't wait for the next one, because as I said earlier, it really reminds me of New Super Mario Bros. U. Well, New Super Mario Bros. in general, but it's... The graphical style is really interesting, the characters are okay, and they have some good mechanics associated with them, and... Maybe there are more goals in Rayman than there are in Mario, so it's always fun to have something to work towards. I'm getting my ass re- Damn it! Alright, Outline Miami. It's crazy, it's insane, you're going to die like 200 times in this at the same... <laughs> I hate you openly and without regret. You're going to die about 500 times trying to do that one level, only using your fists. And you're going to equip a lion mask to be able to walk through walls or something, I don't know. And then you'll learn everything there is about the plan Miami. But really bad stealth sequence. Seriously, what were they thinking? I'm really not a fan of them stealth sequence. Especially because they have a binary fail state. Either you win or you don't. You know, just drop my points if you grades and I'll still live. I I won't replay it until I have perfect. But some people might. And those people like stealth stealth sequence, so give it to them. Don't don't, don't make me do that. Theatric make it Final Fantasy. Well I really love music games. And I love Final Fantasy music. And I love RPG elements in games where they don't usually belong. What do you get if you mix all these things? You get Theatrhythmic Final Fantasy. A game recommended by Point Double O Seven. Borderlands 2. Yeah. If it wasn't for the whole well, fight for your life thing and dying and respawning in really frustrating ways, it would probably be my game of the year. And maybe the checkpointing system could be done a little better, but, and some of the characters are kind of obnoxious, but besides all those things, I really like Borderlands too, so yeah, it's earning a pretty good spot in my top 3. Um, Diablo 3. Diablo? Ah, how do you guys say for that question? I don't remember. Alright, Diablo 3. Uh, yeah, it's good. I've been in it like 500 times. If you like the click 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 type of game, this year you're pretty well served. With Torchlight 2 and uh, Path of Exile, who's currently in beta, and Grim Dawn coming next year, and Crater. Yeah, Crater is good. Yeah, lots of games. And Diablo 3 is the best of them all. It's really interesting, has great replay value, um, new, very interesting design choices as how the skill system was built, and, and they're adding stuff really often. I mean, they've added the Paragon leveling system and the special boss thing, and where we can craft very powerful rings. And I'm sure they'll add a new class or two in the expansion, and the enchant, and the mystic, and yeah. Can't go wrong with Blizzard and Diablo 3. And my favorite game is Rhythm Evan Fever. Because I'll remember its tunes for years. 
I still remember music from, you know, classics from my youth, such as Mario RPG and Earthbound. I mean, I really love that music, and when I hear it, I remember, you know, what gameplay is associated with the music. And with the Midden Fever, yeah. Some of these tunes are pretty good, and some of these minigames are pretty good. Uh, not everything. You know, I'm not blind to bad. You know, the, the rap so love rap thing, meh. The um, thing where you have two guys spinning and hitting a ball, meh. That wizard's ripping me. Yeah, you just focus yourself. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not perfect, but damn, it, it's so good. Uh, oh man, man, man. Damn it. I forgot Cook Serve Delicious. That'd be my top two. Sorry, Faster Than Light. You're, you're... What? An unexpected turn of events. I forget in the game. Why wasn't it on Wikipedia? I've played so much Cook Serve. I've played so much Cook Serve Delicious. It's like WarioWare mixed with Restaurant Tycoon. It's it's great. You're stressed. You're working your ass off to prepare all these orders. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Sorry, faster than light. You're dropping out because Cook Serve Delicious is my number two. Then Diablo Three, then Borderlands, etc., etc. Uh, what can I say about Cook Serve Delicious? You play your restaurants how you want to play it. You upgrade your foods to have more complicated receipts. Where you get more money. And everything's a mini game. You know, press left and right really fast. Or press the precise key combination. To create soup. Oh god, soup. I'm having soup. Traumatic nightmare. Yeah, I'm really sorry, people that make it so delicious. Also, I've heard that the iPad version is out, so I'm going to look at that when I have time. Yeah, so, Cook Show Delicious, recommend it if you haven't played it. It's really good. Uh, I love that it's made in Game Maker, because. I know how to use that, so technically, theoretically, I could make a great game like that too. Oh well. Uh, yeah, so anyway, if you want to learn more about Cooks Are Delicious or many of the games that I've discussed here, you can always, always read my reviews. I'm trying to... Well, I'm pretty nitpicky, but I'm trying to find things that I disliked in these great and pretty fun games. Because, you know... I know that everybody's a critic, but if I have some academic interest in video games, and if I can, you know, suggest some ideas of how I would do it to f fix certain things that are perfect, well, why not? I know that I'm not going to write to the developers and say, hey, maybe you should tighten up the graphics in L3, but... Everybody's got ideas. I'm not the most famous designer in the world, but I design things. I, 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 I know how some things work. Is it Bowser time? Bowser time. So yeah, uh, that's it for me, I guess. Rhythm and Fever. If you love rhythm games, you owe it to yourself to play it. It's my game of the year for 2012. It doesn't have AAA graphics, it doesn't have a AAA budget, but it's... and it's very simple in its ways, but damn is it good. Damn do I... Yeah, everything. <laughs> yeah. It's the kind of game that I would show to a friend who hadn't seen it. I would just pop it in and start over and show him everything in one go. 
And it's so interesting and crazy and oh crap what? Not off fill sticks. Yeah, rhythm of fever is so interesting that you you you, you can just see all of it in one go without you know being bored. Everything's new each time. So yeah. Alright. So let's just end this on some good old Tetris attack. I love Tetris attack. It's my game of the year for 1992. Anyways, hope that wasn't too boring. Uh, deliberating about game of the year stuff with other people is a way better thing in my opinion because. You have to choose as a team, so you talk about it and debate. It's just—it's not just some guy playing old SNES games, talking to himself, and probably mispronouncing things like Diablo. You know. But I'm doing this because I love video games and I have things to say about them. You know, like my blog where I review stuff. I'm not doing it because people will read it, well, I hope that people will read it, but if they don't, it's alright. I'm writing it so I get better at writing, and I find better ways to say what I think about, you know, the media that I love most. And maybe someday all of that knowledge will help me with my own games. I'm working on all kinds of projects right now. I'm always working on some project or the other, even though I'm very busy and I have a job and a family and bills and investments or whatever. But you know. That's for my game of the year 2012. Maybe I'll do something similar next year. Maybe I'll be at a different place. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure enjoyed doing it. And uh, happy holidays, folks. Let's just finish this before I quit. Did you know that I played that at PAX against some random person and lost? <laughs> yeah, I underestimated him pretty bad. That's it for today. I'm Point Double Seven with my Game of the Year review. In air quotes. I did not lose. <laughs>